Bonsoiri. Welcome to the very first episode of Beer of the Week, part of the um, Bow Wow series, which is uh, part of my blog of Aussie in Monaco. The uh, Bow being Beer of the Week, the um, Wow being the Wine of the Week. And uh, so we're, we're doing the Beer of the Week here at the moment. This, uh, this is a very important uh, bottle of beer here because it uh, completely fitted the bill for me as far as this segment goes. So this is um, Belle Rose, a uh, blonde extra beer. The trick about this beer is if you look on the back of the bottle, it's actually brewed in France, so it's a French beer, so it's regional, but it is a multi-awarded beer and one of the prizes is from Melbourne, where I was actually born. So, hello. I mean, this beer was screaming at me to be reviewed as the first beer on this uh, segment. So, there it is, the Belrose beer. What we're going to do with um, all of the uh, segments on um, Beer of the Week is uh, we'll go through a, basically a similar format, I guess, and we'll look at uh, a few aspects of the beer. And um, the first thing we're going to always do is we're going to give the bottle a rub. <laughs> there it is. Give it a rub. Uh, uh, nothing happened. Mm. I was hoping for a genie. I always recommend that. Give the bottle a rub. Hope a genie pops out. Didn't happen on this occasion, but sooner or later, you never know. All right, so I like this bottle because it's, uh, it turns out to be... Um, 75 CL, bit of an irony there, but the point of the matter is that it's uh, it's basically uh, two bottles of beer, really, isn't it? It's a full, it's a long neck, if you want to call it that in uh, Australia or New Zealand, it would be called a long neck. Um, obviously, it's a big bottle of beer, it's a full bottle of beer. Uh, you can entertain a whole crowd with this bottle of beer. The thing about beer is uh, obviously the percentages these days vary massively through from um, non-alcoholic beers right through to absolutely knock your socks off. Uh, you could, um, you know, light a fire with uh, some of the beers and the alcohol content that's out there these days. This one's a bit on the strong side. It's 6.5% alcohol volume. Uh, so it's getting up there a little bit. Uh, when you think about a wine generally being somewhere between about give or take uh, 10 or 11 percent up to about 15 or 16 percent so it's pretty strong beer you know two two bottles of this is the same as a basically a full bottle of wine so that's uh, that's getting up there a bit but anyway we'll uh we'll keep that in mind um the next thing about beer is this is this is very cold this is chilled right out in the fridge fridge uh, temperatures two degrees this thing's just been sitting out here for a minute or so and it's uh just above two degrees. You, you've got a chill beer. I mean, anybody who says you don't chill beer is, uh, you know, honestly, has had too many beers, I would say. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about with most beers is actually the name. So, think about the name here is, this is like Belle Rose. And if you can see that hopefully on the bottle there, you know, I mean, I think that's a cracking, cracking label, personally. You know, Belle Rose, it's got it all, really, hasn't it? And um, I think that really does add something to the aesthetic of the beer and um, the overall enjoyment. So, for example, I mean, if we took this bottle and we instead we could cross out the Belle Rose, let's say we called it Weasel, for example. I mean, I think the, the whole thing is when we eventually taste the beer, we're, we're thinking Weasel, aren't we? Whereas here we're thinking Belle Rose, and I think that's quite a nice uh, thing. I mean, it's similar if we could, you know, if we called the beer Uvula, that, that again, it just doesn't have the same ring, does it? You know, Uvula. Uh, whereas Belle Rose, I mean, you know, it's going off and we haven't even opened it yet. I think that's a great thing. With beer tasting, we are going to follow almost a wine tasting format of look, smell, taste and then the finish as well so um it's a bit like it's just trying to formalize things a little bit and so that we've got some sort of uh, uh grid to work with uh, or some sort of paradigm uh for our for our beer tasting so let's open uh this bad boy of rock and roll 
Um, I mean, honestly, opening a beer like you're opening a bottle of uh, champagne, you know, it's got to be a good thing. Personally, I think that's fantastic. Here we go. Ah, very nice. Look at that. Brasserie de Sources. That's uh, my French accent coming out there. Um, all right, corked beer, that's uh, or a, a beer with a cork rather than a corked beer. So that's, uh, that's all good. So let's pour it out. Now, you'll notice something here. I haven't got a beer glass. I've actually got a um, um, Shiraz or Shirah Rydell, approximately, I give or take about 700 mil or so, you can pour into that. It's a wine glass, generally uh, reserved for reds, as distinct from a beer glass. Now, the reason is simple. You know, when you pour this out, firstly, you get a far better look at a beer if you pour it into a wine glass. Here we go here. Get a far better look at it. And secondly, you get far more sense of the aroma. Now that, that there, I mean, if I had a head like that, I would actually be in frame, or my head would be in frame. It's that good. That's a fantastic head. Uh, so there's nothing, uh, this beer is, um, for some people that's probably, you know, too much head. But for me, that's, uh, I like it. So I think that's um, a very good part of this beer. So I'm already enjoying it before I've even tasted it. Okay, the next part is the uh, olfactory nerve, the smell of the beer. Okay, now, for those of you at home, that smells absolutely nothing like Big Boy's Bedroom. That is heaven. Big Boy's Bedroom was hell. Enough said. So, so far, so good. It's, uh, the appearance is beautiful. It's um, sort of a dark amberish color. Um, the head has remained. It's, uh, and this beer is really shaping up to be something. I'm actually uh, really looking forward to it. So let's, let's try it out and see what it tastes like. Okay, well, I try and taste beer similar to the way I taste wine. So I basically slosh it around in my mouth a little bit, get the aromas happening, and also give my uh, cranial nerves a shot. And uh, so we're uh, letting the taste aspect of this uh, come out. And also, the aroma, particularly the olfactory aspect to, to beer, which uh, goes up the back of your um, back of your throat into the nasopharynx, and you get a um, the aroma of the beer. And in fact, it, can, it often can be stronger than when you actually you know try and stick this up your nose. But so this is a this is a this is a beautiful beer. It's a very 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 enjoyable beer. It's. Uh, It's bitter in as much as beer generally has a bitterness about it, but it's 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 a very it's extremely smooth. I mean, really, when you think about it, uh, I mean, this is as, probably as smooth as Marty's dance moves at a med ball, and that's uh, that's saying something. So it's a, very very nice beer, you know. It's a it's a Latin lover of a beer, if you ask me. Although it's made in France, of course, so it's nowhere near Latvia. <laughs> okay, so the finish is the last thing we're going to talk about, and um, well. Again, there's no sourness, there's no tartness about it, there's no, it's, it's, a, it's a very enjoyable beer. I mean, 
this has finished as well as Torval and Dean, if you ask me. It's a great beer. So let's uh, talk about scoring, scoring this beer. Okay, well, the scoring system I'm gonna utilize is based on the uh, rating system developed many, many years ago under strict scientific conditions. And that is that a 10 would be the homebrew that myself and uh, my friend Pat cooked up in about mm, the year 2000 or so at a small apartment in, uh, in South Yarra or Turak under very sterile conditions with uh, full surgical gear, face masks and full surgical scrub after which the beer was uh, put into specially heated fish tanks and um, over several weeks uh, basically developed and that is probably the epitome of beer when you think about it although unfortunately only a few people ever got a chance to try that one so if Pat and my beer rates a 10 um, then uh, on the other side of the scale on the downside the bottom of the mountain um, a zero what would a zero be a zero would be probably um, let's say the way a beer tastes on the on the way back up that would be a zero this beer mm, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it an eight so that's pretty that's it's, it's obviously it's the uh, inaugural uh, episode of um, of bow so maybe I've uh, you know Maybe I'm getting a bit heady here, but still, I think it's about an eight. It's, it's an excellent beer. So I highly recommend it. There it is, uh, Bell Rose. It's a French beer, fairly strong beer. Won a prize in Melbourne and some other cities around the world as well. But hey, won a prize in Melbourne. And, uh, you know, I'm liking the label there. And, uh, you know, let's face it, it's like a, it's like a bottle of champagne. I mean... What is not to like about this beer?